China is fighting the coronavirus with a brand new test. You might feel a slight pinch. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. China has a new coronavirus test, and it's a real pain in the butt. Now, I don't want to taint your view of China's anal swab test. Some Chinese experts claim it's way more effective. One specialist told CCTV, if we add anal swab testing, it can raise our rate of identifying infected patients. But of course, considering that collecting anal swabs is not as convenient as throat swabs, at the moment, only key groups, such as those in quarantine, receive both. Sure, it's not as convenient. But if you're going to be forced into a Chinese quarantine center, you might as well have a little fun, right? So how does the test work? Don't worry, they've made diagrams. You only have to put the swab in about one to two inches deep. Of course, it's also helpful to know what the heck is happening. Apparently, some residents in China's northern regions have been subjected to the swabs with little warning. Surprise! This new test couldn't come soon enough. It's almost Chinese New Year. That's the biggest travel holiday in China. An estimated three billion trips happen during a normal year. That's not good during a pandemic. Already, more than 22 million people are under lockdown. And so, more than a thousand school children and teachers in Beijing were given anal, throat, and nose swabs last week. I hope not all at once. On the plus side, I can't wait for the next New York Times article praising how well China is handling the pandemic. Those reporters can be the first ones to try out the test in America. Of course, one expert told Bloomberg, I don't understand why Beijing added anal swabs. Well, they don't call it a communist party for nothing. While a couple of studies have shown that in some cases, the coronavirus is still detectable in stool samples, even after it doesn't show up anymore in nose or throat swabs, it's not clear that means anything when it comes to spreading the virus. There's no evidence that virus transmission is any more common among patients who test positive in the anus area. All I know is I do not envy the scientists who have to run that study. China doesn't have any nationwide policy about the anal swab. So that leaves its use in the hands of overzealous local officials who will implement any policies that might stamp out the coronavirus or even policies that just make it look like they're stamping out the coronavirus. No one wants to be in charge of the next Wuhan. As the Washington Post puts it, since the beginning of the pandemic, China has been willing to take draconian measures to halt the spread of the coronavirus, even at enormous inconvenience to its population. In the early days of lockdowns, health officials sometimes sealed apartment buildings to keep people from leaving. Millions were rounded up for overnight flash testing drives, with people forming lines in the streets in darkness. In darkness? That's the perfect environment for an anal swab. And the problem is, now that anal swabs have become a thing, unless someone in the central government comes out and says to stop, more and more areas will implement them, regardless of whether they actually help that's how it works in China's communist system. Another example of this is the problem that China is now having with food imports. In their eagerness to blame the coronavirus on any other country that's not China, Chinese state-run media have been running a propaganda campaign about how the virus may have come from imported frozen foods. Meanwhile, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization have both said that there's no evidence that anyone has gotten the coronavirus from frozen foods or food packaging. But people in China are now scared of buying imported food. And frozen food is just sitting at Chinese ports for weeks, causing a huge backup in the global food supply chain. 
Some areas in China are now also dealing with food shortages and skyrocketing food prices due to lockdowns. People aren't happy about the high food prices, but they're even less thrilled about the anal swabs. Obviously, people are concerned about government overreach. Or would this be underreach? But really, to help protect the public from the coronavirus, is there anything you wouldn't let the government do to you? Or are you a monster? Anyway, no matter how bad things get in America, let's just say they got it a lot worse in China. And this kind of penetrating deep China coverage would not be possible without the support from viewers like you. I call them the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who contribute a dollar or more per episode through the crowdfunding website patreon.com slash China Uncensored. As a thank you, I'll answer your questions. And today's question comes from the OK Woodsman. With all the money and efforts into the many military and civilian island building projects, isn't the CCP worried about sea level rise due to climate change? Now that's a good question. If you don't know, China is aggressively expanding its territory in the South China Sea. They've built artificial islands and then call them Chinese territory. How do they get away with that? Well, first, they militarize them. And then, they have Chinese citizens move in. For example, Sansha City, built back in 2012 on the Paracel Islands. It now has a population of almost 2,000 people. But, as you say, OK Woodsman, what if the ocean levels rise because of climate change? helped along by the insane number of coal plants China has. Well, that's why China is also building secret villages along the China-India border. Those are way up in the Himalayan mountains. So you see? The Chinese Communist Party has plans for any contingency. That's why they hate to be the butt of jokes. Thanks for your question, OK Woodsman. And thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.